She doesn't quite chop his head off. Or chop his head off with an axe. Don't chop his head off! He's gonna chop his head off. Hey, plan B was to have coffee in the big room. It was not to chop his head off. Our pet's heads are falling off! Okay, just calm down. Many people enjoy a nice chicken dinner, but rarely do we stop to think about where our meal has come from and what it takes to get it from the farm to our plate. I will spare you some of the more unpleasant details, but basically, the chicken is beheaded and then sent through an assembly line to be further cleaned and processed before being packaged and sent to market. This preparation is generally carried out by large corporations at processing facilities, but it is still carried out on a smaller scale by individual farms and farmers. This was especially true in rural areas in the middle part of the last century. These individual farmers processed the chickens in much the same way as their industrial counterparts, with the main distinction being that most of their work is done by hand, which would include beheading the chicken with an axe. This process has been carried out millions of times, almost always with the same predictable result. But, on a single occasion that defies all odds, one lucky chicken survived the chopping block and went on to have quite an amazing life. This is the story of Mike, the headless chicken. On the morning of September 10, 1945, while beheading chickens for sale on his family's farm in Fruita, Colorado, Lloyd Olson witnessed one of the beheaded birds get up and start running around the yard. Olson placed the bird in a box and expected it to expire overnight. The next morning, Olson was astounded to discover the chicken, which he had called Mike, was still alive in the box on the porch. Olson thought he had quite the novelty on his hands, so he decided to take Mike with him as he went to town for the day to sell the offerings from his family's farm. While in town, Olson made the rounds at the local tavern. Eager to show Mike off to the townsfolk, Olson capitalized on his new attraction by placing bar bets, betting patrons a beer that he could show them a live, headless chicken. Considering the odds that such a thing could not exist, many bar goers took the bet, and Olson spent the rest of the day drinking for free. While free drinks and 15 minutes of fame at the local pub could have been enough, it was nothing compared to the fame and fortune that would come to the Olsons and Mike over the next 18 months. Before we begin with Mike's incredible journey, we first need to understand just how he was able to survive after being beheaded. A blood clot spared Mike from bleeding to death after the axe blow missed his jugular vein. The majority of his brainstem and one ear remained attached to his body despite the fact that his head had been cut. Mike was able to maintain good health because the brainstem regulates fundamental processes including breathing, heart rate, and most of a chicken's reflex activities. This is a great illustration of how central motor generators allow for the maintenance of homeostasis even when more complex brain regions are not active. In addition to the vestibular organ used for flying, birds also have a secondary balance system called the lumbrosacral organ in their pelvic area. Because of this, it has been hypothesized that the vestibular system in the brain is not essential for walking and maintaining balance in a headless chicken. In layman's terms, it could be said that Mike was only partially beheaded. Although approximately 90% of his head was indeed severed, the physiology of a chicken's brain allowed for the remaining 10% left to be enough to carry on most basic motor functions. Enough of his trachea was left intact to allow for breathing and eating, and the miracle of the blood clot forming allowed Mike to survive the initial blow and carry on living with the assistance of his owner. Olson cared for the bird by administering a solution of milk and water in an eyedropper, along with some cornmeal and worms through the remaining section of Mike's trachea. With the help of Olson, 
Mike was able to live a very bird-like existence. He was reportedly seen pecking at the ground, attempting to preen his feathers, and even made efforts at grow. But those really just sounded like sad, gurgling sounds. Although Mike's journey to fame began as a mere parlor trick, his story quickly gained traction and people began to take notice. His story was initially covered in the local newspaper. However, the article quickly spread and the story of Mike the Headless Chicken, or Miracle Mike as he was sometimes called, eventually reached a sideshow promoter from Salt Lake City, Utah, named Hope Wade. With the help of Wade, the Olsons and Mike began a whirlwind tour of the country that included stops in multiple states, as well as feature stories in both Time Magazine and Life Magazine. The Olsons, or rather Mike, would go on to receive letters and fan mail from across the world. Mike was put on display to the public for an admission cost of 25 cents. At the height of his popularity, the Olsons earned $4,500 per month, equivalent to over $54,000 in today's currency. Mike was valued at and insured for $10,000, the equivalent of over $120,000 in today's money. Sadly, Mike's journey eventually had to come to an end. One of the many forms of assistance that Mike required was the cleaning of mucus that would form in his open trachea. The Olsons would keep the area cleared by cleaning it with an eyedropper to prevent the mucus from obstructing Mike's breathing. While on display at a sideshow event in Phoenix, Arizona, Mike's airway became obstructed. The Olsons searched frantically but could not locate the eyedropper needed to assist Mike with his breathing. After surviving the impossible for an astonishing 18 months, Mike choked to death on the evening of March 17, 1947. Although Mike's miraculous life came to an end, his spirit is very much alive in the city where his legend was born. Every year, the city of Ruiza, Colorado, holds the annual Mike the Headless Chicken Festival on the third weekend of May to honor Mike's record-breaking performance. The festival has blossomed into a massive event just as wild and eclectic as Mike's mythology. Partying for the weekend begins on Thursday with a launch event hosted by the city and local businesses. Tents are pitched on the lawn of the Fruita Civic Center on Friday and performances continue late into the night. Fruita restaurants like the Hot Tomato Pizzeria and Sons Brothers are open, and the courtyard is stocked with fun activities like cornhole and free hoverboard rides for kids of all ages. As events move into the weekend, Saturday is where the real action of the festival happens, making the first two days feel like a warm-up. To celebrate the chicken that beat death by 18 months, the last day kicks off with a road race. Mike, the Headless Chicken 5K, is widely regarded as one of the best local races thanks to its stunning scenery and high level of competition. For those who don't wish to run, there is a disc golf tournament at a Snooks Bottom disc golf course. Enthusiasts can test their skill on a one-of-a-kind course that runs parallel to the Colorado River at the Headless Mike's Disc Golf Tournament. Throughout the day, visitors may enjoy crafts from local vendors, a car show, and a poultry exhibition, including over a hundred of the region's rarest and most unusual birds. The festival closes with a Suds Brothers Wings Eating Contest and some excellent live music. If you happen to find yourself near Fruita, Colorado, stop by to check out the festival and pay a little tribute to Mike, the little chicken that defied the odds and brought joy to so many people. If you enjoyed this episode of Can't Be True, give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. If you have any amazing but true stories you'd like to hear about, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.